Coming up next on City Scene, it's rodeo time in Casa Grande, bull riding, parades, barrel racing, and more. We'll give you all the details on this year's Cowboy Days and Odom Tosh. It all starts now on City Scene. Welcome to another edition of City Scene. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Cowboy Days in Odom Tosh is almost here, and here to tell us more about the week-long festivities is event organizer, Larry Rains. Welcome to the show, Larry. Thanks, Mary. So tell us about the annual event. Well, this event's been going on in Casa Grande for close to 50 years now, and uh, we're, we're happy to have the Odom Tosh name back and the event to be trademarked under that particular name and and as always Cowboy Days has been uh, an event that's been going on in Casa Grande for for many years and we've been able to to keep the uh, both of those uh, primary rodeos together in a week-long event. So what can people expect this year? We're going to have much of the same fun as we've had the last several years. Um, we've, we do have a schedule of event that we're going to be following as we have with la the last few years. We're going to kick off that Saturday, uh, February the 13th at 10 a.m. with a parade on Florence Boulevard downtown. Uh, immediate fo immediately following the parade, uh, the gates open for the uh, All Indian Rodeo, the Odom Tosh All Indian Rodeo, and there'll be two performances on Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m. each day. So what are you expecting as far as number-wise, as far as the participants in the parade? Well, you know, Mary, the, per the Odom Tosh Parade has been a staple of the community for years. And for those that have been around Casa Grande for several years, you remember the long parades with a variety of entries, uh, both Native American, a cowboy type uh, horse, uh, equestrian type entries. Uh, when Odom Tosh left the community, the parade went away with it. So for a couple of years, we didn't have a parade at all. And so we're now, again, beginning to feel the momentum. Uh, we've gone from a small parade a couple of years ago, and we now have begun to grow the parade. Last year, we had approximately 50 entries, and we're anticipating more this year. Uh, it'll be a mix of entries again. We've got the high school bands that have made a commitment. We have uh, several Native American uh, uh, entries that will be uh, in the parade again this year. And, uh, and, and, and obviously, as we have the last couple of years, we'd lead that off with the Vista Grande uh, Marine Corps uh, JROTC that is the, uh, the carrying the flag. So if anybody's interested in joining the parade, they can certainly call in. It, it wouldn't be too late. No. In fact, our deadline for the parade is the end of January. Uh, the parade entry forms are uh, available online or through the uh, committee chairman, Bill uh, Schwind, at the city of Casa Grande. Uh, the, there is no fee for the parade, uh, to enter the parade. Uh, and so we encourage anyone who's interested in coming out to, uh, to fill out the application and, and to uh, be part of that activity. So why don't you give us a breakdown of the type of events throughout the course of the two weeks? That's a good question, Mary. Uh, as I mentioned, immediately following the parade, we're going to be opening the gates at the rodeo grounds. And for those individuals that are not familiar where that uh, facility is at, it's on off of Pinal Avenue and Rodeo, 2525 North Pinal Avenue. You'll see the, you'll see the rodeo grounds as you, uh, as you meet that uh, intersection there. But we are going to be opening the gates uh, immediately following the uh, parade on Saturday and, and then again at noon on Sunday. Uh, it is a one o'clock performance and it is a full rough stock event both days. And so what you're going to see during that uh, rodeo is a, a variety of activities from bull riding. There's the last couple of years we've sold out the bull riding. There's been close to 60 uh, bull riders in Casa Grande. We have the, 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 the rough stock horse, uh, horse bareback and saddle bronc. We have team roping. Uh, we feature the barrel racing and the tie down and so it's uh, as I said it's about a two two and a half hour performance there's a lot of entertainment that goes along with that uh, our stock contractor uh, Jerry Honeycutt is back again this year he always brings a, a good uh, sized stock for the uh, contestants and uh, they bring some entertainment for the uh, for the fans and the spectators that are in the seats watching the event and so it so it goes by pretty quickly so that rodeo is particularly just all native, correct? That's absolutely right. There is, uh, you have to be a Native American to be able to participate in that, in that rodeo. And in fact, we get so, several of the top 
uh, uh, Native American cowboys uh, coming into Casa Grande. Some of the top uh, ropers are in town. Some of the top uh, uh, bull riders are in town for that event. And so uh, there is one particular element of that rodeo which is, which is referred to as the Quad Nation roping, which is a roping that is uh, team roping that is specifically uh, geared towards are the members of our neighboring uh, Native American communities. And so in order to participate in that Quad Nation roping, you have to be a member of the Gila River Indian community, the Akchin Indian community, the Tohono O'odham Indian community, and or the Salt River Pima. And uh, we've, had, we've had quite the success with that event the last couple of years. And, and as, as I learn each year during the event, it's something that is appreciated by our, by our neighbors and, uh, and, and, and really something that they, they look forward to each year. So tell us about some of the other events throughout the week. So Mary, as you know, we have several events that take place uh, over the course of the week. And uh, it starts out following the Odom Tosh Rodeo on Monday, which is President, the President's Day holiday, with our Maple Leaf Classic. This will be our seventh annual Maple Leaf Classic, and it is geared specifically to the neighbors from Canada who come to Casa Grande uh, and, and the neighboring communities. Our, our streets fill with, with Canadians, and um, we find that there's quite a few of them that bring their horses and love to team rope, and, and we're up to the last couple of years up to 400 teams as part of that. And so it's becoming, again, just more of a hit. We're feeling, uh, we're finding that we're we're feeling more and more of the uh, the the Canadians showing up for that event, and and we're excited about about that again this year. Um, Tuesday is an open day for us this year, and there's a reason for that. Um, we normally have the Mike Survey Memorial roping that fits into that, uh, but because of the, the the timing of the calendar and the Tucson rodeo, that particular event will be moved to a week to the following week. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get uh, to the end of the discussion today. But so we move to Thursday and we've got a, uh, an all amateurs team roping. It's an open roping. Uh, the, the promoter is Ty Yost. He's a pretty well known promoter in the state of Arizona and particularly in the central part of the state. And he has several ropings during the course of the year and he puts on a pretty good event for that Thursday. And then on Friday we have the ladies back out. Uh, the, with the barrel racing and that's been a big hit over the last couple of years and uh, we always love to add that component to, to, uh, to that, to that week-long event. And then we finished the week then with the ranch rodeo, is that correct? That's correct. The ranch rodeo is going to uh, draw a conclusion to our week-long event again this year. So that Saturday and Sunday, the, the 20th and 21st, the ranch rodeo has, has, is a growing hit in Casa Grande. It's, it's, it, we, we actually have uh, cowboys that are coming off the various ranches from not only in Arizona but from around really the southwest. You know, these last couple of years we've had teams that have come as far as from Oregon and from Minnesota to come down and participate in this ranch rodeo. And it's a, unlike the, uh, unlike the all Indian rodeo that is more uh, of an event that is for an individual or a team, these teams are comprised of four uh, working hand Cowboys, and so they they participate in four. It's, it's four four members to, to the team, and they do four separate events, such as trailer loading. They do a calf branding, uh, and then we also do a saddle bronc um, activity as part of that for those for those cowboys that that like high risk maneuvers. They get out there and get to ride the saddle broncs. So, what is the draw that brings them to Casa Grande for these type of events? Well, I, on the all on the all Indian uh, Odom Tosh Rodeo, basically what we have found is that there is a series of fairs and events that are going on in our neighboring communities, and the Native Americans really have appreciation for that. And so, several years ago, Casa Grande, and in fact, approximately 50 years ago, Casa Grande elected to pay tribute to our to our Native American communities for all of the business that they bring to Casa Grande and so the organization was formed and as such the the, the just the weekend of fund uh, with kind of the anchor being the, the actual rodeo and so with the with the uh, all Indian rodeo what you find is that individuals are find fi find Casa Grande on that map of, of of events that are taking place and rodeos that are taking place and, and they're coming from all over the Southwest. A lot of the contestants are from Arizona, but they find their way to Casa Grande simply because it's more than just a rodeo. It's a, they're, 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 there's an opportunity for them to take, take uh, to, to really have fun and, 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 and bring a, what I would consider to be their family to, a, to just a, a, a fun family community activity. As far as the as far as these other types of events and the ranch rodeo specifically, quite frankly, we have a, we we have a lot of cowboys in, around Casa Grande and in the and in the region, and ropings are certainly a big hit. Um, 
we in fact, our rodeo grounds starting at the end of October through March are booked every weekend with some type of an activity, primarily ropings. So we've got a lot of team ropers that are in the, in the area. And then as far as a ranch rodeo is concerned, a lot of these cowboys are literally coming off of the ranches and driving to Casa Grande specifically to take a, to take a shot at becoming the champions of our ranch rodeo. And, and, and I think that one of the things that, is, that I have found at least that is luring them to Casa Grande is the fact that on both ends of, of, of the events, we really take care of them in the form of prizes. So our payouts, the, the, uh, the buckles that we buy, and those types of things, it really lures these individuals to come. It's something that they enjoy doing anyhow, but, it, but, they, but they see a reward in, in, in prizes. Well, and I was just gonna lead into that about the sponsorships. Tell us how that all is coordinated. Well, the sponsorships are a very key component of this event, and, and, and certainly while this event is, is actually uh, run under the umbrella of the West Pinal County Mounted Sheriff's Posse, which is a local 501c3, and the subcommittee is specific to, uh, to this activity and this event during the week, uh, the sponsorships are a key component to ensuring that we're able to have this event year after year. And we have several sponsors that, uh, that have been with us by our side since the onset. Uh, Crescent Crown is a premier sponsor for, the, for this event. Uh, they have been with us. Uh, a couple of other sponsors that have been with us since day one is Sun State Equipment. Uh, we've, we've got a new sponsor with Henry Brown this year. They're, they're coming to the table as a, as a premier sponsor. And so really what we find is that most people are unaware of the fact that, that rodeos really aren't big money makers. They're more entertainment value. And particularly in our case, we want to be able to lure these contestants. And so all, all the money that is paid in entry fees are paid back to the contestants 100%. We're not taking any component of that off of the, off of the, uh, the cut to, to in fact pay for those prizes or anything of that nature. And so from a business perspective, what we find is that we have to put a lot of butts in the seats, uh, a lot of spectators in order to pay for the stock contractors and everything that goes on with the production of that rodeo. And so the sponsorships help us have the parade. They help us kind of shore up all the other activities that are going on that really are, are, are not money producers um, and just to keep the event alive. So tell us some more of the other activities that are taking place. There are several activities that are taking place, Mary. And again, uh, the primary focus of this committee is to make this event something that the entire family can enjoy. And so we talked a little bit about the parade earlier and that certainly really kicks off the events and gets the momentum uh, started. But we have our carnival uh, coming back. Fraser shows have been with us for the last several years. And the, the unique thing about the Fraser show group is that they are willing to stay in Casa Grande over both weekends. And so they'll in fact begin to spend that Thursday uh, prior to the, 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 the weekend of the Odom Tosh uh, Parade and Rodeo, um, which I believe is the 11th of February, and they'll go all the way through the President's Day weekend, or Monday, and then they'll in fact take a break. They'll go, they call it going dark, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they'll spin again Thursday through Sunday during the ranch rodeo component of that. So our community will have the opportunity to get out if, if your kids want to go to the carnival. We'll have that going on again both weekends. Uh, we did bring back last year the um, softball tournament, the All Indian Softball Tournament, and we're bringing it back again this year. It's 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 a great staple to the weekend. It's something that was very, uh, very active, and people enjoyed uh, the that when the original Odom Tosh to, uh, was in town um, last year. I think we had 18 teams, and we're expecting more than that. Uh, the the nice thing about the the tournament uh, organizer, the the committee chairman, is that she brings the game to to both male and female and so they have they have a male softball you know tournament they have a female softball tournament they have co-ed so it's really kind of a hybrid and and and, and everyone can participate last year uh, she uh, Georgette Johnson is her name she was actually successful at creating a toka tournament for us which is a very prominent Native American game and uh, it caught it caught a lot of it caught a lot of uh, attention, and so we're going to add that to the calendar uh, this year, and so we're organizing that. So I know last year you started with the golf tournament. Is that going to return? That's right, Mary. We uh, we added a golf tournament last year to the schedule of events, and yes, it is coming back. The second annual Cowboy Classic Golf Tournament is scheduled for uh, Saturday uh, afternoon, February the sixth. 
The entry forms are being finalized now and they should be out on the street any day. And so anybody that's interested in a sponsorship for that and or participating with a four person uh, in a four person scramble format, uh, we're going to be kicking that off again at the Dave White Golf Course uh, that Saturday. So Larry, tell us a little bit about the Pony Express. Well, the Pony Express has been something that we've, we've had as a partner, um, uh, a group that we've had as a partner since the onset. And, and really, they're, they're a, a separate organization that, uh, of, of, of riders and equestrian lovers, really, that, uh, that, that have partnered with us to, in fact, carry the mail, much like the Pony Express did in the day, to the various neighboring communities and, uh, and Indian communities. And so what we find is that the, we find it very uh, appealing that, that Friday, February the 5th, it really is a week in advance of the actual activities, um, that, that group, they mount up and they ride to various uh, communities um, and they deliver the mail as they would have back in the day uh, to the uh, distinguished mayor or governor or chairman. And uh, again, inviting them to come participate in the uh, Cowboy Days in Odomtosh, uh, giving them the uh, tickets to uh, to the to the event, and just just uh, encouraging them and their communities to come and have fun for the for the week long uh, activities. So many people don't realize that um, scholarships are given out with some of the the proceeds. Tell us about that. Well, that's what we really work hard for, Mary. That's a, at the end of the day. Uh, besides uh, continuing to promote the traditions and the heritage. Uh, of both the Native American and the cowboy in Casa Grande, which is really the primary goal of the posse as well as this committee. Uh, our, our secondary goal is to award scholarships. And we, we, it puts a smile on my face because I'm, I'm the guy that, that gets to coordinate that and, and do that and uh, present those checks to the nor noteworthy uh, recipients, at least on the, on the Odom Tosh side. Um, but I'll talk about that first because the, there's a different pot of money that goes on the ranch rodeo side. And so on the Odom Tosh side, the, the, some of the proceeds that we in fact earn off of that activity, and again, remember I talked a little bit about the, the rodeo funds and, and, and whatnot, and, but we take the scholarship money and variety of things and we have been successful at awarding a scholarship to three recipients, one from the Tohono O'odham Nation, one from the Ak Chin, and one from Gila River Indian Community for the last four years now. This will be the fifth, and we're in the process of uh, working through that process as we speak. Um, the, the, there's been some changes from when O'odham Tosh was in Casa Grande before with the way that has been administered. We now ask the, the nations uh, through their Department of Education to pick a noteworthy recipient. They give us the name, we go out, we deliver the check, and, uh, and really it's, it's, it's really just to benefit the secondary education efforts and or technical training efforts that uh, some of their uh, local community members are, are uh, looking to achieve. So on the other side of the house with the Cowboy Days and the Ranch Rodeo, there's a scholarship that in fact is generated as a component of the barrel racing that goes on with the with the ladies barrel racing and some of the proceeds that are earned during that actually go out to the uh, Central Arizona College CAC's uh, rodeo team. So that's the second component of the scholarships that I talked about just a minute ago. And what would be an average scholarship amount? Well, we've we have averaged uh, roughly seven hundred and fifty to a thousand dollar per recipient the last two years. And, and again, our goal is to continue to try to grow that. And you know, we started this 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 event from scratch again. I, I know that it was a staple of the community for years, but when the posse got uh, a hold of it, we didn't really have any money in the bank. It was just, we felt like it was an event that needed to happen in Casa Grande. The city became a very active partner in that. And, uh, and for all the reasons that I've talked about before, we started from the grassroots efforts and began to grow the event. And so many people will ask, well, why aren't you doing all the same programming that, you, that, was once, that once took place during Odom Tosh? Well, I think what you can see if you go back over time is that each year we're adding another component to that. And so I would envision in the future that there'll be the powwows and the battle of the bands and those types of things. But as we're trying to get our financial base under us, um, uh, we, we in fact are taking things a little bit slower, again with the end goal being to, to issue these scholarships and I see it continuing to grow with each year as the event gets more successful. So you just talked about finances. Obviously you can't put this on for free, so give us some of the costs and that will be involved in going to the activities. Well, Mary, you say free, and I will tell you there's several events that are free, and so you know that's that's that is the good news. 
Um, but as far as the rodeos are concerned, uh, the Odom Tosh Rodeo that first weekend is $15 per person, 12 and under free. Um, the events that are taking place throughout the course of the week, all the ropings, the barrel racings and whatnot, all of those are free for anybody that would like to attend. And then the next weekend uh, when the, uh, during the ranch rodeo, it's a $10 per person fee, uh, 12 and under free. So one of the most popular events is the Mike Survey. So tell us about that. Well, you know, Mary, we have been very fortunate to land this Mike Survey Memorial Roping uh, here in Casa Grande a few years ago. And, and, and as you know, that's when the, the biggest of the, of the big uh, team ropers come out. And in fact, if you're into team roping, you know that the individuals, and, and if you watch the National Rodeo Finals that just took place in Vegas a couple of days ago, you know that several of those individuals that were making the big bucks over in Vegas will be in Casa Grande that Wednesday for the memorial, uh, for the Mike Serving Memorial roping, um, team roping. As I mentioned, it's, it's falling outside of our week-long event again this year simply because of a calendar alignment and it's really tied to the Tucson Rodeo that take, that, uh, that's been going on down in Tucson for years. And uh, we're excited about that event because we have, again, some of the top ropers. Uh, we, the stands get filled with spectators. It's an exciting day down there. Uh, if you want to come out and and see some of the best team ropers, that is the day to do it. Uh, next year, we anticipate that it'll be back in this week-long event. It'll fit in that Wednesday component, and we'll be back to having something going on out at the rodeo grounds every day of the week. So how many people can actually fit in the, the rodeo grounds? You know, Mary, the, uh, the seating capacity at the bleachers are approximately 2,000. Uh, we do have a secondary set of bleachers that would, would seat approximately 500. That's not counting any of the contestants, which you know, the last couple of years we've had as many as two to three hundred contestants. And so uh, during the course of those two weekend rodeos, we anticipate uh, having approximately 3,000 people, just a, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of synergy down there for, for that, those particular events. Now, you also have concessions there, There vendors. will be, that's right, there will be, there will be a series of vendors. In fact, the vendor applications are out on the street as we speak for those individuals that would like to uh, set up a vendor uh, booth as part of the event. We've got that for uh, a day, uh, for any particular day and or for a series of days that you can elect to, uh, to participate as a vendor. The, the posse uh, runs a concession stand there um, and so they'll have that activity as well. And, and uh, again, it's, it really builds a fair-like atmosphere, environment right there within, within the fences of that uh, rodeo grounds itself. So each year it seems like there's some changes going on at the rodeo grounds. That's right. This, the Posse has taken a concerted effort to really begin to make uh, several improvements to that venue. And, and over the years, I know that we've talked about some of the expansion that's taken place with the second arena and the addition of the bleachers. Uh, obviously, uh, we were grateful to get the, the uh, uh, grant funding from the Gila River a couple of years ago to build the pavilion. Certainly thankful to them. The Auction Indian community has been a, a, a great sponsor to this event uh, the last couple of years. Again, some of the proceeds that we earn from this, in fact, are used at the, at the uh, rodeo grounds for enhancements and improvements of that venue. As I mentioned earlier, it's something that is becoming more of a hit because of the proximity uh, in the state, and uh, it's just becoming a great location for these cowboys to come in and participate in the various activities. Well, it sounds like another fun-filled year of events. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Mary, again, thanks for having me. I always enjoy it. Um, I, you know, as far as in closing remarks, I would just like to ask the community to, to really take the time to come out and participate. If it's the parade or the rodeo, we obviously like to see as many people out there as we possibly can. A lot of the local residents, uh, as we pay tribute uh, to and, and recognize our Native American heritage, and, and the friendships that we have with our neighboring communities, as well as just the, the overall cowboy traditions and the heritages that, have, that are a staple to this community and, and uh, want everybody to come out and have some fun. Cowboy Days in Odom Tosh kicks off on Saturday, February 13th and runs until Sunday, February 21st at the Ed Hooper Rodeo Park, located at 2525 North Pinal Avenue. The parade will be held on Saturday, February 13th in downtown Casa Grande. For a complete schedule of events, visit CasagrandeCowboyDays.com or look for a printed schedule in the dispatch. Okay, here's your chance to win two movie tickets. When is the Cowboy Days and Odom Tosh Parade being held? Submit your answer on our website, CasagrandeAZ.gov. Just look for the City Scene logo. Good luck! 
That wraps up another edition of City Scene. If you have an idea for a City Scene topic, please let us know. You can email us at PIO at CasaGrandeAZ.gov or give us a call at 520-421-8627. And don't forget to follow us on social media. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Thanks for watching. Remember, City Scene is your inside look at Casa Grande. See you next time.